Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. This is Srikant Rathod, founder and instructor at Proper Choice Training Institute. Today, I came up with the new idea that whatever the syllabus given for MSAT Achieve Math Test, that I have been divided into chapters. As you are aware, there are three major parts of MSAT Achieve Math Test. That is Algebra, Geometry and Statistics. So those have been further divided into chapter because the syllabus given in terms of point wise. So I have divided into chapter wise so that it is easier for the students to study. And I'm going to create a series of videos based on each chapter. And I'm going to cover the most important four to five questions chapter wise, how they appeared in the past exams. And these questions have been created by referring to the sample papers provided by the ministry and also by taking a feedback from the students who have already taken the MSAT Achieve Math test. If you are so, planning to prepare for the MSAT Achieve test, we do provide a trainings for all the subjects. Our course includes training, course material, along with the two computerized mock-up tests, so which are very similar to the real MSAT exams. And those tests really going to help you to understand the concepts, to understand the way how the questions can be appeared on the exams. But the good thing here is, so once you're done with those mock-up tests, you will be knowing how many questions you got correct, how many questions you got incorrect, and a detailed explanation of those so that whichever the topic still you are struggling with, you can have a review of it, revision of it, and you can make it better. Many students got benefited of the course what we provide and they achieved a great scores and whatever the score they look in fact they come up with the requirement that we are looking 900 or 1250 and all those have been reached up to 1500 1700 and above. So our course plan goes that since the beginning till the end of the course we will be in uh, continuously in contact with the students to make a better preparation so that he, they won't be missing anything of it. So if you need any further details regarding, please follow the detail given in the description box below and you can get in touch with us. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon so that whenever I update a new videos, it will be notified. And also share that to your friends so that they can also get benefited of it. So the series of uh, videos what I'm going to create here, those are the most important what you need for the MSAT Achieve Math Test 2023. So right, so let's get started. Question number one is, which of the following is a rational number? Generally, real numbers are divided into two types. So we call it as one is the rational number and another one is irrational. So now which type of numbers are said to be rational numbers? So number which can be represented in the form of a fraction. So for example, P divided by Q provided Q is not equal to zero. And such numbers are called rational numbers and they should have a terminating decimal or even though they are non-terminating, the number should be recurring, so repeating. So such numbers are called rational numbers. For example, 0 0.125, such numbers are called terminating decimal. So 3 divided by 4, which is a rational number, 2 is a rational number. And also, let's take 3.121212, it's going infinitely, which can be written as 3.12 bar they are also a part of a rational number. So then which number we said it as irrational then? Irrational number is the one which doesn't satisfy what all we have mentioned. Like irrational numbers are those which are non-terminating and non-repeating. So what does it mean? If you take an example of a pi, for example, so which is written as 22 by 7, so which can be represented in the form of a fraction, but they are non-terminating and non-repeating. So 22 by 7, its value is approximately 3.1459234174. It goes infinitely without any repeating number. So the pattern will not repeat. Only such numbers are called irrational and rest all are the rational numbers. Then how do I do this in exam? So rather than remembering in the way, 
just take a help of calculator whichever the number given to you put it in the calculator and check it up convert into decimal once you convert into decimal if it is a terminating decimal it is a rational so terminating means like after decimal point i have few digits like one two five and if after decimal points the numbers are repeating like one two one two one two it is a rational and only after decimal points the numbers are not repeating so here for example only such numbers are called irrational so all non-perfect square numbers non-perfect cube numbers are all irrational numbers and if you look at to the option which one we can say pi is an irrational number 2 is a non-perfect square number it is irrational so we are looking for rational let's get rid of it 2 square root of 2 square root of 2 is a non-perfect square number it is an irrational so square root of 9 by 4 square root of 9 is 3 and by 4 is as it is because 9 is a perfect square number so definitely this is a rational number because 3 can also be written as 0 0.75 which is a terminating decimal, we get it as it is a rational number and option C is the right one. So once you confirm that out of like whatever the option you have checked, one is correct, then don't waste your time for checking up the next. Okay, so that's how you can answer. Question number two is use the following values for A, B, C and D given below to find the answer of the following expressions. There are some values given for A that is A equal to 6, B equal to 8, C is 4 and D equals to 3. Substitute carefully in this given expression and check it up what answer you are getting. This is purely a calculator type question. In exam, you might get any expressions like very weird which you haven't seen it before but still they do ask you to do that. So carefully put them in a calculator and get it done. So let's do this. So a cube, so let me just type it as it is. So replace a with six, six, we can say cube divided by b value is eight, then plus four, what is the value of c times four, c value is four. So four times four, it is basically divided by two times, what is the value of b eight minus three, times d value here it is 3. So what final answer I am getting? Press it equal, you get answer as 82. So this is what the answer to this question. So carefully put it in the calculator, 82 is the answer. Question number 3 is, the expression below is undefined for which of the following values of x. So this given expression is undefined for what values of x basically. So what actually the undefined and which conditions make that expressions to be undefined so let me tell you, there are only two situations makes any function or expressions to be undefined. What are those? The first one is any number, any number divided by zero, which becomes undefined. So you can try with by putting in your calculator. For example, if you say two divided by zero, calculator shows error or math error or syntax error. Actually, it does not exist. Why? Because it's not possible for us to make a two part out of zero. Zero is nothing basically. So it's not possible for us to make two part of nothing. So that's why we consider it as undefined. And another situation what it makes undefined is square root of any negative number. So even though the square root of negative number we consider it as imaginary when we talk about the complex. But in general square root of negative number also says it is an undefined so that is example square root of minus 2 whenever question includes about the term undefined you should think of these two conditions any number divided by 0 or square root of negative number is so in our case which of the following expression below makes that function expressions to be undefined just look at on the denominator Whatever the expression we have, it may be a quadratic, cubic, linear, doesn't matter. Irrespective, set it up that equation equal to 0 and solve for x. So when I'm setting it up equal to 0, it means I'm trying to find the value of x for which this entire expression in the denominator turns to 0. So solve for x, how do we do that? 
simplify it then it becomes 2x equal to 8 whenever we take a term from one side to another the sign changes negative turns to positive positive turns to negative and also we are asked to solve for x i want to make x alone so what should i do next divide by 2 on either side to make x as alone so x is equals to 8 divided by 2 which is 4 when you substitute the value of x as a 4 back here the result of this denominator turns to 0 so i must say x is equals to 4 is the value of x which makes that entire expressions to be undefined and this is the answer to the question these are very commonly asked the question in exam so remember undefined means two conditions question number four is eight times the difference of three x square and nine is it's basically a word problem we have to translate into an expression so follow the carefully eight times the difference of 3x square and 9 is. So let me tell you some commonly used word while translating an expression or a word problem into an equation or expressions. Whenever we use the word times or of, it's basically multiply. Whenever we use is, are, equal it means we are asked to put an equal sign in between sometimes we also include the word more than so more than meaning plus less than or we can also use the word difference meaning minus so these are the basic terms what i can use while translating word problem into an expression so let's follow them carefully they say 8 times 8 times basically multiply the difference of 3x square and 9 when i'm saying difference of 3x square and 9 so i should say 3x square minus 9 this entire difference is multiplied so i should put this in a bracket why because if you don't put it in a bracket you are just multiplying 8 with 3x square this is a times okay it's not x let me just make it as small. Okay. This is. So, 8 times the difference of 3x square minus 9. So, you should put like whenever we have a difference with the terms, please keep a habit that you have to put the terms. Please keep a habit that you have to put it in a bracket. So, which can also be written as 8 times 3x square minus 9. So, whenever we have a bracket, so we, I can or I may not represent the sign here for multiplication. We consider it's a multiplicative. So we should go with option B here. Question number five is, what are the three negative consecutive integers if the sum of the first two integer is three more than five times the third? Seems to be very complicated, but very commonly asked question in MSAT. They are saying, what are three consecutive negative integers if the sum of the first two integer is three more than five times the third so first of all try to understand what are the consecutive integers consecutive numbers also we can say the number which comes one after another are called consecutive integers or consecutive numbers for example i must say one two three four it can also be 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. There is no end. You can see that every numbers are getting increased by 1. So such numbers are called consecutive. But here question asking us 3 negative consecutive integers. So which of those? What Which satisfy the condition what they have mentioned? So rather than trying with should I take those numbers as minus 3, minus 2, minus 4 or any. In reality, I don't know which one should I go with. Whenever they ask you this kind of question, try to represent consecutive numbers in general. So how do we write it as consecutive numbers in general? So consecutive numbers, we write it as if the first number is X, maybe positive, negative, I don't know. If first number is X, then next is going to be X plus 1, then X plus 2, X plus 3 and so on. This is the way of representing consecutive integers in general so now let's follow the instruction given what are the three negative consecutive integer if the sum 
of the first two. What does the sum of the first two means? Add when you are adding the first two term, sum of the first two integer is three more than five times the third. So let me write which are the first two we are talking about. Sum of the first two. This is the my first integer. This is the second integer. And this is the third integer, right? So sum of the first two, that is first one plus the second one, sum of the first two is, this is second one, oh, sorry, it's not two, okay? One. So I can make it as sum of the first two, I'm putting in a bracket saying that this is my first term, second term, not necessary to put. Sum of the first two is, for is, what should I do? Equal three, more than i mentioned that for the more than we should put plus as i have explained in the pre, uh, previous example five times five times the third what is the third integer third integer is x plus two so five times five got multiplied with this is a multiplication okay so five times the x plus 2. That's what they make an equation now. So simplify it carefully. x plus x plus 1 equal to 3 plus. Let's distribute this 5 because 5 times uh, x is going to be 5x plus 5 times 2 is going to be 10. Simplify it. x plus x is going to be 2x plus 1 equal to uh, 3 plus 10 is going to be 13 plus 5x to solve for x let's take all x related term to the one side that's basically combining the like terms okay and take the constants to the other side so once you take the x to the left side and constants to the right side what happens 2x minus 5x equal to 13 minus 1 because whenever we take from one side to another sign should be changed 2x minus 5x is negative 3x equal to uh, 12 asked to solve for x so divide by negative 3 divide by negative 3 so what happens so 12 divided by negative 3 x equals to negative 4 so this is the my first number in the pattern so as i know that is the consecutive integers are of this type if the first number is negative 4 here if the first number is negative 4 second number will be negative 4 plus 1 is going to be negative 3 third number is negative 2 these are the three consecutive negative integers i should go with negative 4 negative 3 negative 2 option b so these are the varieties of questions what you can expect from the first chapter that is math foundations and they are mainly and commonly asked type questions please do like share and subscribe to my channel so that i get motivated to upload such informative videos which gonna really help you for your msat achieve math tests see you in the next video soon thank you